Good evening, everyone. I'm Luke Anzalatos, and I'll be talking about nanoterminators. This is a nanoparticle cocktail with antibacterial and antibiofilm properties. And the first thing you'll probably be asking is, what exactly is a biofilm? Well, biofilms form when a colony of bacterial cells basically create a shield made out of proteins, sugars, DNA, and, and other bits of dead cells. And this basically blocks out antibiotics. Because of this, they're responsible for around 80% of chronic infections. And they're known to form on invasive medical equipment, so things like um, catheters, assisted breathing devices, uh, surgical implants, orthopedic implants, and surgical equipment. And at the moment, the only treatment is to give between 100 and 1,000 times a normal antibiotic dosage. Now, what exactly does this mean? This means that common infections may once again become deadly, and the cost of an action between now and 2050 could be upwards of 135 trillion Australian dollars. And deaths from antibiotic-resistant infections may rise from 700,000 in 2018 up to 10 million by 2050, surpassing current and annual cancer deaths. Now, what's the answer? Well, my answer is nanoparticles. Now, nanoparticles can kill cells in multiple different ways. And this diagram is meant to be confusing on purpose because there's just so many different ways nanoparticles can invade a cell. Um, bacteria have little resistance to nanoparticles at the moment, and unlike drugs, we can really mix and match different combinations of nanoparticles to tailor a cure. So, the first nanoparticle we'll be talking about is galenstan. And galenstan is a liquid metal, kind of like mercury, and it's commonly used in thermometers. Um, the strengths of using galenstan is that it's magnetically active, so in a magnetic field it actually changes shape from this spherical form to a spiked ball form or a rod or a disc shape. And the thing with all these secondary shapes is they are very sharp. They have a lot of sharp edges and points. And what these do is they can actually tear through bacterial cells. And this is up to 99% effective. And the other positive thing about it is they don't actually damage human cells because human cells are a lot thicker and a lot more elastic. The only downsides to Galenstan is they can't actually perforate thick walled bacteria. Now this is where the second nanoparticle comes in. Silver nanoparticles don't actually tear through bacteria, they actually go inside the bacterial cell and prevent it from reproducing. They interfere with the metabolism. This is up to 98% effective. The only downside is it has a lower effectiveness against some thinner wall bacteria. And it's also stored in the liver and kidneys, which is never good for long-term exposure. A third nanoparticle is one called curcumin, and this comes from turmeric root which, as we all know, is in curry powder. The strength to this is it doesn't actually destroy, it doesn't actually kill bacteria, it stops them from communicating with each other. And this causes biofilm growth to eventually stop and degrade. And this is up to 99.9% .9 effective. The only downsides to using curcumin is it's less effective against sugar-based biofilms. So, how viable is this cocktail of nanoparticles? Well, first of all, it's versatile, so it can be used um, to disinfect medical equipment before and after use. It's easy to produce in countries with a lot of farmland, a lot of, a lot of natural resources. It's easily stored for upwards of three years. We don't really know how high it can go. There's a lot more testing that needs to be done. And lastly, it's quite affordable. So it only needs a dozen ingredients and the small scale production cost is around 90 cents per liter. So what further research can we look into? Firstly, we need to find the ideal nanoparticle ratio, so one with low toxicity and high effectiveness. We also need to look at long-term effects of silver in the body, so chronic exposure to silver. We also need to look at environmental effects once the nanoparticles have actually left the body. And the final thing is further life testing to make sure it's 100% safe. Thanks for listening.